Ketra Blocker, who works for us, um, actually brought wrapped in a purple towel. What he told me was a mammoth tube um, right through the clubhouse when we were very busy. So I told him to please just go in the back and we'd take issue with it when I was done serving the ladies' luncheon. Um, then I went in the back, he opened the towel, and he said that's a mammoth tube. Dr. Fisher and Scott coming back out in the fall and they did a small dig in the area of where the tooth was found and found, I think it was 52 items. They found vertebrae, tusks, a knuckle bone, in a relatively small area, which then led everyone to know that there was further digging to do. Uh, digging down into the sediment below the topsoil, below the sod, which we carefully removed to replace later. And we're clearing off a smooth surface so that we can look at the color and structure of the sediment um, underneath the golf course. And the importance of that is that we may see some sort of polygonal features, sort of like mud cracks on, a, on an old dried up mud puddle. Um, and those are places where, in fact, the sediment has dried out at times of drought in the past and little cracks have opened up and bits of topsoil have tumbled down into those cracks. And they produce this pattern of looks like the polygons, polygons nested one next to the other. And the importance of that is that that shows, that that's a natural pattern that develops over even millennia sometimes as we have times of drought followed by times of uh, more abundant uh, rainfall. And the fact that that pattern is there in that, that natural way in which it accumulates and develops it's a natural process of time, that means that that's undisturbed ground underneath there. And when we find bones underneath there, which I'm sure we will, because we've been in adjoining units, um, we'll know that those bones are in a state that represents the way they were back at the time this animal lived, this mammoth lived, or shortly after it lived. Um, that is, none of these bones that are underneath a pattern like that will have been disturbed by any of the recent landscaping associated with the development of the golf course or any of the excavation associated with cleaning out the county train. Uh, they're basically sealed into layers of sediment that are a sort of time capsule that preserves those parts of this animal as they were uh, 11 or 12,000 years ago. Uh, just part of the skull. And interestingly, the external surface actually comes around here and connects, which means that instead of just being a miscellaneous piece of the, of the skull wall, it's the corner of something, but I still can't quite see enough to, to tell me what. This unit right here, they have a, what's called a patilla. Uh, that's a kneecap uh, that's coming up in the unit. You have another smaller bone with a particular surface that's just a little fragment. We found a few fragments today. We should get them more soon. My name is Rob Davidson. I'm with the Discovery Channel in Canada. Uh, we're here to cover the excavation of mammoth bits and pieces, but what we at Discovery Channel loved about it was the fact that, that a 19-year-old kid was stumbled across a tooth, and not only stumbled across a tooth, but he had learned about it in science class and knew enough to know exactly what a tooth was, a mammoth tooth looked like. Would you know what a mammoth tooth looked like? I wouldn't know. This 19-year-old kid did. I think that's a fascinating story. That's why we're so delighted to be here.